What's up, guys? My name is Chris, and today I'm showing you guys how to use EB Synth and Reflect Technologies to turn yourself into Leo DiCaprio. If you guys enjoy these videos, click the subscribe button down below to stay notified for all the different EB Synth uploads. So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get into After Effects. Now, if you've already done some EB Synth tutorials and you already know what you're doing here, go to this time right up here to get to the new stuff. But other than that, just keep on watching. I'll show you guys exactly what you need to be doing. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to After Effects, and with your footage already in After Effects, drop it in your composition, and here's what we have. For this one, I have like this 30 second little snippet. And you're gonna select a little section of the footage that you're gonna use. So for me, I'm gonna use about five seconds down to about 20 seconds. Then you're gonna control M and you're going to go down here to the output module, change from lossless AVI to PNG sequence, click OK, and export wherever you want to. What you are gonna to wanna to do is save in a subfolder and name that whatever you want. I'm just naming mine EV Synth Test Space because that's what I called this. And these little brackets with the pound signs in there, you're gonna keep those in there because that's what keeps everything sequential. So go ahead and click render and we're good. All right, so here's the folder right here and here's the output module. This has every frame from that little like 20 second sequence I was gonna be using. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go through and we're gonna find the keyframes that we want. Now typically the best keyframes we have have us looking face forward at the camera showing everything that we're gonna be having in frame. And for me it'll probably be this one right over here at around 1,002, 1,102. So right there is a pretty good keyframe, although it's kind of an embarrassing photo nonetheless. We're gonna go ahead and just use that as our keyframe. So go ahead and copy that into our main folder and that's gonna be our key right there. So go ahead and just make a new folder, label it key and drag it in there. All right, after we have that keyframe in there, we're gonna go to reflect.tech.com. So go ahead and go to whatever web browser, go to reflecttech.com, and here's where it's gonna bring you to. You do have to make an account for this, so if you wanna use a throwaway, use a throwaway. I just use my main account for everything spam related. So from there, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and upload that keyframe that you want to do the face swap on. So copy that in there and wait for that to load up, because it might take a second. It's gonna bring up this frame right here where you can actually select the photo. So we're gonna go ahead and just click that, and we can choose between faces that we upload. So I've already done a couple of like Elon Musk, Ellen DeGeneres, Leo DiCaprio, and Johnny Depp. But you can also go to the celebrities tab over here. And I'm just gonna go with Nick Cage. Let's go with Nick Cage and Jesus, that's terrifyingly depressing. We're gonna go back from that actually. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh Jesus. I don't like that. Let's... Ugh. Save that for a thumbnail, maybe? I am saving that for a thumbnail. That's terrifying. Let's try somebody else. Uh, Johnny Depp again. Okay, actually not horrible. Changes just enough where it's not me, but it's definitely... We're gonna go ahead and save that one too, because I want to show you guys a couple of these different effects that we get. And then let's do one more and let's just go good old Leonardo DiCaprio. So where'd he go? He's down here. So let's see how I look with him. Let's see how it looks. Ooh. It's not that bad with DiCaprio's face on me. So let's go ahead and just save that download. There we go. And we have three keyframes that we're gonna have to do something with now. So let's just go ahead and take that DiCaprio keyframe and we're gonna copy that guy back into our keyframe folder. And we're essentially just gonna rename it those last numbers that we have on there. So we have 01102.jpg. That is gonna be our keyframe that we're using with this. So from this one, you can delete that or hold on to it, do whatever you need to do with that. We're not gonna mess around with it. Now, if we went to EV Synth right now and we try to use it as it is, it's not gonna let us because the files are two different sizes, two different resolutions. The original one we have, if we go to the properties, the details, it's 12, to, it's 1920 by 1080, whereas the new one, after compression and everything, it's 1500 by 843. So if we try to use those together, it won't work because the two frames just are completely different sizes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the photo editing app of our choice. In this case, I'm just going to Photoshop because I have it downloaded and already open, so it works that way. All right, now that we're in Photoshop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create new and we're gonna make one that's the exact size that we need. So 1920 by 1080 is a simple HD frame right there. So since I already do stuff like that all the time, I'm just gonna select that one, select create, and we're gonna drag and drop our old photo in here. So the one that we have that's too small of a size, we're just gonna drag in there, drop in, hold shift, and just drag and resize to make it frame size. Then control S, and for your export, you might as well just overwrite that first one because we're not gonna be using it at that point. So if you wanted to, you could over overlay this one with the old keyframe to try to get rid of those watermarks. I'm not worried about that right now. This is not a tutorial on how to remove watermarks from stuff like this. If you want to do that, you could totally do that afterwards, but it's not my priority at the moment. 
So at that point, you can just go ahead and close Photoshop. You don't have to worry about saving. If you're planning on doing a lot more of these, go ahead and do that. I'm now I'm just gonna do these three and that's it. So from there, we have our fully resized JPEG file now. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get into EVSynth, we're gonna open it up, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the rest of this. I have a full tutorial on how you guys can actually use EVSynth, I'm gonna link that right up here in the cards for you. But at the end of the day, it's really simple. All we're gonna do over here is we're going to drag our keyframe folder into this thing where it literally says keyframes. I'm gonna drag the video folder where it says video. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we're gonna come over here to the keyframes and the stops down here. And we're gonna rename those to make them the right sizes. So it's gonna be, the keyframe we're using is 1102. We're gonna stop at say 900 and we're gonna to go to 1300 total because I do believe that's when this one taps out. Because it goes all the way down to 566 and it goes all the way up to 394. So let's just keep it at 1300. Keep it a nice little middle ground there. And for mine right here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click advanced, go to mapping. I'm gonna keep that probably about 15. I'm gonna change the D flicker up to a two. And diversity, I'm just gonna lower that to about 3000. Um, you can try to mess around with these. I go more in depth than each of these on the tutorial itself. But essentially, what each of these do is they make it look better. <laughs> Now, um, the flicker makes it less stuttery, mapping makes the track a little bit better, and diversity, I'm actually still trying to figure that one out, so I'm kind of just tweaking values and seeing how those all look, so. We're about to find out what that actually does. And one final thing before we click the magical synth button, is we're gonna rename our output dash DiCaprio. I think I just butchered that spelling, but I don't care. We're running synth, and we're good. Now we wait 12 hours for this to get done. All right, and after your video's done rendering, it's gonna look a little something like this. It's gonna have all these different keyframes already put in there, and if you jump into it, it's actually gonna show a little bit of the DiCaprio face, but there's also all this distortion and artifacting around the body itself, which I think is honestly just due to the limitation of software, and yeah, I don't really know how to fix that. If you guys have any suggestions on how to actually fix that or take care of that, let me know down below, because I've been trying, I've been working, trying to figure out everything, and the best I can do is sit still and don't move hardly at all. Don't bring my hands into frame if I brought them out. That's about all I got so far, but the DiCaprio face looks pretty damn good. So with that being said, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna drag that folder into Premiere Pro, which I've already done because it takes forever for it to download and actually save in there. All right, then you're gonna select the folder. You're gonna select this little automate sequence button down there. And pretty much you're gonna keep everything the exact same, except you're gonna change the placement to sequentially, change clip duration from in and out, to frames per still, and then change that from 30 frames to one frame, and that should pretty much be everything else. Everything should be defaulted to regular and work just fine. Those are the big two that you want to change, is make sure it's frames per still, one, and then sequential. Oh, never mind, maybe it's not sequential. It's selection order, not sort order, but selection order, so it doesn't really matter. Just click OK, and it's gonna automate everything in the sequence, and it's actually gonna look like a video. So then you're gonna select all, right click, nest as a group, yes, and then render it out because it's gonna be stuttery as hell right now. All right, now that it's done rendering, here's what we got. Looking good so far, and then it, okay, there's a little bit of distortion on the face, there's a little more, the background's distorted. Looking pretty good, pretty decent, honestly. Not great, but it's definitely a Leo DiCaprio face on my body. And I definitely think if I shave, then this would actually make it look a lot better, make it actually track better. Um, not even just in tracking, but in like the whole facial uh, facial swap. Because it looks pretty decent. Definitely looks like Leo DiCaprio eyes and Leo DiCaprio nose and everything. But just the jawline, the face, and like the lower, the mouth area is definitely overwhelmingly me. So I think I'll have to try this again in the next video with shaved face. So I guess we could label this one shaved beard. But with that being said, let's check out the other two that we got. So we have Scarlett Johansson. And Johnny Depp. No, I genuinely haven't seen what those look like right now, so I'm sure they're equally as terrifying as they were in the photos. All right, and that's how you use EB Synth and Reflect Face Swapping to turn yourself into other people, like a changeling, like a little morphe, slimy little changeling person, and I've been playing way too much D&D recently. So that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button down below and click that little bell icon to get notified. Right up here is a tutorial playlist of different EB Synth uploads I have, and right over here is a video that YouTube is saying you guys are going to enjoy. 
which I actually don't have a clue what that is. So with that being said, I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next upload. Peace out guys.